Okay, welcome back. We're on page 707, talking about the kinds of, of things that the exception class has in it. So instead of just saying git message, uh, this time I'm going to say two string. It's going to give me a lot of geeky stuff. Now, normally I wouldn't use two string every single time. Uh, well, maybe. Okay. Because it's going to have some geeky goodness in there that a normal person wouldn't be able to understand. So if I say X, Y, Z, it's going to tell me the name of the exception. It's the Java Lang number format exception for input. Now, that's not terrible. I mean, it's not incredibly geeky. I might want to use that one day. Now, <clears throat> um, so sometimes what I want to do when I do an error message, I want to do both my custom error message and I want their internal message both, okay, which is kind of what we're doing here. I typically just do it all in one line, something like this. Could not convert to a number like this and then throw in their guy. And I'm going to use the full one. Okay, so basically I'm putting in my custom error message plus their error message. My error message, you know, could be something a little bit more sophisticated than it is. It, so what, why on earth would I do both? I mean, don't they both actually say the same thing? Well, let me tell you. The two string and another method, which I haven't talked about, instead of saying git message, you can say git localized message. The two string is going to spit out the error message in whatever the native language is on their machine. Okay, now that's cool because could not convert a number is going to remain in English. But if you were if you were on a machine where you had loaded the Spanish version of Windows and the Spanish version of, of the Java runtime, then that error message here that says Java language for input string, that's going to be in Spanish now. Isn't that pretty cool? So it gives you just a tiny bit of advantage because half of the length, half of the message is going to be in English and the other half is going to be in whatever native language they have. So that's pretty doggone cool. By the way, does that sound like a test question to you guys? Okay. So sometimes if I had a lot of geeky stuff, I mean, there's other things that there's one called um, stack. Let's go ahead and do this, the stack trace thing. I mean, that's kind of crazy, but we'll do it anyway. ln ex and say git stack trace. I think I can do it just like that. Maybe I have to do a two string afterwards. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, okay, I'm not going to bother with that. The point here is you could get some, some really good geeky goodness, okay? The geeky goodness is tells you like what line number that broke on, okay? Now, which might be handy while you're writing the application, but once you're finished with the application, you want to turn that off, okay? Or make the error messages shorter somehow. So in other languages, there's a thing called a, a preprocessor directive, okay? You put a little tag out there that says, you know, if debug, then give us the long error message. Else, give us the short error message. Okay, Java doesn't have that. Uh, but what you can do is you can create a method somewhere, you know, that says show error, or print error, or something like that. And inside it, you could just fix it so that, you know, after the application's been written and you've debugged it, you just go to that one location and change it to the short version of the error message and then pick up where you left off. It'll, it'll change it everywhere so everyone using that same method can switch between the long and the short. Okay, so that's kind of sort of the way I do it. Um, I, I create a custom error, error printing method that, that during debugging, while I'm developing, it might take me, you know, two weeks to write an application. And so during that two weeks, I get the full blown stack trace down to the line number of where the thing occurred, because that's often, that's the most important thing when an error occurs in my application is show me what line number on what file caused the problem. But after I go to production, I don't want other people, first of all, they're not going to have the source code. So what good would it be to say, you know, Java 11, I mean, chapter 11, Java line 42. I mean, that wouldn't mean anything to them. Okay. 
So you could have there's a um, there's a, th a thing on page seven ten talking about polymorphism. Oh, you remember that polymorphism? No, you don't remember. Oh, come on. Okay, polymorphism means I, I can write to the general. And then the specific will know what I'm talking about. You remember all that? Okay. So I don't always have to tell it the, ex the exact exception. So, for example, if I was to just take this part out and leave it as a generic exception, is it going to make any difference whatsoever? Let's go see. So my age is... Doop, doop, doop. And it makes no difference whatsoever because of polymorphism. I asked it, hey, give me the two string. Well, it knew what two string to use. It was the explicit one for the number format exception. Okay, kind of makes sense. So, sometimes you really don't care what went wrong. I mean, it, sometimes you, I mean, sometimes you do because you want to deal with it separately. But other times it's like, it doesn't matter what went wrong. I don't care. Well, then you can use this polymorphic thing. <clears throat> so, um, let's let's do <clears throat> let's update what we know so far on um, our input validation stuff. Now, I've got a text file here that's going to help me because I don't like to type. So, I'm going to go here and grab this little text file and just light all this stuff up. Oh, come on, machine! Well, quit spinning it around and give me what I want. Okay. I'm just going to do a control C. Find me a spot down here and do control V. Boom. Okay. Let me just go through this. Um, uh, I guess for this to work, I'm going to have to, I'm going to need a, a, an enumeration. Sorry. Um, okay. Well, let's just put one right here. So I do um, public enum. Uh, department type is what the example was. Okay. And I have one called, you know, sales, one for engineering, G, E N G, engineering, finance, and admin. Cool. All right. Now that I got that, let's go back and see what I just copied in. So here's the traditional prompt for integer thing that we've been using so far. You know, let's just go through it. So um, I start with a do loop, and the reason I do a do is because I know it's going to run at least once. And then I spit out the error message, and then I convert it. And right now, up to now, we've just been ignoring the fact that it doesn't work. Okay? And then we check to see if it's within the range, and then we get out. So basically now, now that we know that, there's actually going to be three different tests that we're going to do. So let me just write this down just to make sure it's perfectly clear. All right, so test number one is, is it blank? That would be a good test. Test number two is, does it convert? And test number three is, is it inside the right, is it in the range? Okay, that's what we want. All right, so I'm going to break this up into two sections now because I want to be able to get to the message first. So um, let's create me a buffer here. Cool. And then I say uh, buffer is equal to keyboard next line. Okay, so far so good. This part looks kind of sort of now about the same. But the first test was, is it blank? Well, I don't need any exception handling for that. I'll just do this. You know, if buffer is blank, then throw some sort of an error message, right? System error print ln. Uh, the value cannot be blank. Or something like that. Okay, so the first test is, is it blank? And then the else, I want to keep going. So I'm going to do else. Hey, I'm going to show you a trick here in just a minute. All right, I'm going to copy some text and put it inside that else. 
So when I light up my text, if I was to light it up and copy it, I, it loses the, the, the fact that I've lit it up. So I'm going to do it in, in two steps here. I'm going to go grab this part. Okay. And first I'm going to indent it. Because indenting it doesn't make it lose my thing. And then I can do keyboard, control X, which makes it go away. And then put it right there, control V. Boom, isn't that pretty cool? All right, so <clears throat> if it's blank, pop this out. Now I want to see if this dang thing works. This is now buffer. So I need to put this in a try block. So I do try. And of course, just to make that red squiggly go away, I'm going to go down to immediately go down to here and say catch. And I'm going to use a polymorphic one because I don't really care why. All right, I don't really care which. No, it's not why. I don't want to carry which ex, you know explicit one of these exceptions occurred. I, I I don't care. So I'm just going to use the polymorphic one. I'm just going to say exception ex. Okay. So once again, I need to grab this stuff and do an indent, a control X, pop in here, and do a control Y. <laughs> So now the try block is going to try to get this thing. And then if the exception occurs, I'm just going to say something along the lines of, you know, system dot er, uh, you know, print ln um, could not convert the input into a number. And I'm going to do both, okay? So I'm going to do like a new line so it doesn't all run together. And then I'm going to throw in <coughs> ex to string. Okay. <coughs> all right, you see what I did? All right. I, I broke this thing up into, into to three chunks. The first number one was, this is rule number one. Number one, is it blank? And then here, did it convert? Dang, I cannot get that to light up to save my life. Number two, did it convert? And then down here is rule number three. Whoops, sorry. Sorry, here is rule number three. Is it within the acceptable value? Now, if I was to go back and try this, let's go back to here. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to comment this out temporarily because um, I don't really need that right now. So I'm just going to comment that guy out. Boink. And I'm going to use the new one that says um, int age is equal to prompt for int um, enter your age and then put a min and a max of 0 and 140. Typically I would uh, use those as constants but hey. Alright, so then I'm going to uh, grab this guy and see how well this thing works. Is it bulletproof? That's what we're after. Is it bulletproof? Is there anything you can do to kill this gang? Let's find out. Enter my age. <clears throat> so I'm going to be X, Y, you know, da, da, da. it says, nope, couldn't convert the input. Enter my age, fine, okay, uh, uh, minus 40. Nope, enter my age, blank. Nope, uh, 4,000. Nope, you know, nope. Okay, I made this thing bulletproof now by, by having three tests. One is, okay, did I leave it blank? One is, did it convert by using that in the try? Now, it also inside the try, I did the third one. Because remember how it sequences? right? It does the first. If there's an error, I, the test three never runs. But if there's not an error, then test three does run. Okay? that's a, That was deliberate. Okay, we're coming up on the 15-minute mark. You know how this goes. <clears throat>